we already have we've missed 16 minutes already so i will get right into today's tax so um welcome so today we are going to be looking at google ad all right so i uh, will start off google ad so hope you are hearing me audibly and my audio is okay my screen is also visible to you right all right so <clears throat> we'll be moving to google ads and uh others can join i just drop link to the i just pray to i drop a link also i just hope to yes i'm ha i'm hoping as well too so uh google ads as we know is a software created by google and it enables us to acquire data as well so google ads is the reason why we have a whole lot of data we're having today from the point data like for example now google ads should be able to identify your house your office and different places having names appearing on the satellite image we are acquiring uh, most thanks to google ads the reason is they have what we call open source that is they have people contributing to make this happen for example i don't know whether you've seen whereby you go you visited some places and then when you go back home you see a notification on google asking you whether this place you went do you know the name of this place now that's how google used to put those data together and share with us on their platform they also have a satellite they don't really have a satellite actually but they collect feet from other satellites all right so google itself don't have a satellite so they collect feet from different satellite source to use for their data are you with me sir hello Are you still there? Hello, sir. So, um, today basically what we'll be doing, we're looking at how Google Ads operates. So we're starting with uh, the file. So we have this as the ribbons. So we have what we call the file. This file, we have open we have safe we have email we have uh print we have import so open in open when you click on open what you see is that uh it's going to enable you to bring in different features let's say i have a, a share file i want to bring in here now i have hotel share file so once i change from here to shape file you see s3 shapes and i click open it's going to import that shape file it's asking me do you want to apply a style template to the future in you ingested i'll say yes so it's asking me to create a new template or an existing template let's go with new template so it's asking yeah so i'll just say okay so it's, it wants to save this data as Google Ad style template first. So after then, it's going to come in. Now, once it comes in, it is taking me to the place where these data are. But then the data is not showing. So what we need to do is to check here on this hotel. So once we check, we see that three coordinates of the hotels appear. So each of these hotels have a name so now if we zoom well we will see that this hotel is in hawaii in jalingo uh that is mile six and this other one they are in different location anyway but then you see that this whole thing is safe on temporary places so if you want this to be permanent that is like the way you see these ones appear here 
if we want it to appear here anytime I open up Google Earth, then I'll have to right click and save it as my place. So that's another thing. So if you save this as my place, then it's going to move up here. Now it's going to move up and you see now it has moved up. So once it is up here, anytime I open up, it's going to open with it. But anytime it is in this temporary place, temporary places, and I restart Google Earth, you will realize that the Google Earth will not bring them back again. So that's another thing we need to note. Okay. So we'll go back to my place and we'll try to import now. Let's say we have a K, uh, a, a, we have a, let's change it to Excel file, a CSV. Let's say we have a CSV we want to bring in here also, or let's just quickly put it as all files. So all files mean everything will appear, whether it's a JPEG, it's a TIFF, every file. So I want to input this AG. That is, okay, let me input this, uh, let me import this boundary of Jalin group. So I'm going to click OK, open. Now it's going to pop up here, ask me, so is it a delimited file as a CSV? I'll say yes. So what space is what is it the uh, doing? It's a comma. Like you know, normally between this file, if you put a comma, it's going to show, differentiate them. So we have the long and the ladder, the eastern and the northern. So I'll say next. Now once I click on next, it's asking the latitude field is showing latitude and the longitude field is showing longitude. So that's correct. So I'll go to next and then I'll go to next. I'll go to next and then that's all and I'll click finished so it's asking whether i want to apply the style template to the ingested to the file i just ingested i'll say yes so i'll still create a new uh field also and then i'm going to click ok so this will come in asking me to save the temporary um, the kms file that's the my style template i'll do same okay i think i've bring it before so i'll just still receive it now you see that it is first in temporary places so I'll first right click and I'm going to go to save my places. So it's going to save and move it from the temporary uh, point to the permanent point. So the next thing is I'm going to check it. So I'm going to see the boundary. So this was the boundary between Jalingo and Yoro Luku government of Taraba state that was uh, corrected and sent to me to work on. So now I've been able to import. So that's the first thing we have for this uh, aspect of the training. So the next we have is, uh, we want to look at the view tab. Now on this view tab, if you want to save an image, you have these things, you can remove, your, remove you can remove this toolbar, you can remove the sidebar, you can remove, come back under the view, And then you can remove the status bar. So once these things are removed, you see that it has a plain uh, place. So let me find a place in Jalingo so that we could save. So let's we want to save the stadium. So I'm going to allow it to clear up. But before it does that, I'm going to bring in place mark. Now I'm going to bring back side view. No, not side view. I'm bringing back toolbar. Toolbar. Tool, yeah. So this toolbar will allow me to, uh, yeah, will allow me to bring in this place mark. So I'm going to select four points of this place mark. So I'll put one here. I'll name it one. I'll name it one and I'll OK. I'll bring in another one. And I'm going to select it two. I'm going to make it two. Then I will drag it to this extent. So I'm trying to save image if you just join. All right, so I'll pick the place mark again and I will make it three. Then I'll put it here. I'm going to make a little adjustment so that I have uh, the root here. So I'll click on OK. Then I'm going to do the same for the fourth point. So I'll put the fourth point here. And I will make it four. Okay, so that's okay. 
now to save this image first i'll have to remove the toolbar and uh, the sidebar as i've done already then i'll make adjustment to this okay so i'll hide this first so that yeah so i'll make adjustment, making sure these four points are showing now i will go to file and i'll go to save and i'll go to save image Are you back, sir? All right, so if you're back, I've been trying to save image. So let's go back to Google Edge. All right, so it's showing me, okay, to save. So first I'm going to increase the resolution to a maximum and then I'm going to hit the save button. So once I do that, I'm going to call it uh, Jalingo and then I'm going to hit the save button. So this will going to move from 0 to 100 and it will save. So the image will actually be clear but it is not your reference. Now, the reason why you need this place mark is so that you come and use them for your referencing later. So it's saving already. So you will use this for your referencing. And to do that, you just basically, basically um, if you put point one, you just right click on this and go to property. You see the coordinate. Then you take this coordinate to ArcGIS and with your reference. So uh, I will also advise you save one of this image because we're going to give it a try to your reference. I'll we'll go to Google it and we'll go to ArcGIS training. Okay, so let's wait a bit for it to to save. Hello, sir. Are you with me? Can you hear me? All right. Yes, yeah, so yes, all the video I'm, I'm yeah, that's no problem. I'm I'm also recording the video, so today's one will be clearer than the other because I'm using my system recorder as well. So it's going to be clear this time around. All right, so um. As you before you come in, I'm already saving a Google Earth image, so I'm trying to save an image for on Google Earth as well because I've been explaining when you went off. I've been explaining and I've been recording. So here currently the image is at 40%, but then let me do. I don't think I don't, it won't allow me to do anything right now. But then I was explaining on file. There are things you do on file. You save the image from file and other places. So. Once you watch the video, you should be able to uh, go through it. But then let the image save so that I will continue from there. All right. So the image currently has 68%. 71. So I want it to save so that you also, once you are watching this video, also save, do a portion and save. Do it the way. I do on the video because we are going to use it for georeferencing. All right. Hello. Yes. Okay. So it has saved. So once it's safe, you will. Re yes, you will remove the image. There is a dot sign here. You remove the image. So I've done that. So. Now, the next thing we are going to do is we'll come to under tool. Now, let me return every other tool since we've saved image. Now, I'm going to return the toolbar under view. I'm going to return the sidebar and I'm going to return the status bar. These are all we need while working on Google Earth. So, for if you want to save image, you have to uncheck them. So, the next thing we'll be doing now, the status bar have come. You can see where my mouse is pointing. They are coordinate down here. 
So those coordinates right now is showing degree decimal minute. Sorry, degree dec uh, decimal degrees. So I want to show you how you can change them to any coordinate system of your choice. So to do that, you come under tool and you go to options. Now under options, you have decimal degrees on this show lat and long. You have decimal degrees. You have degrees, minutes, seconds. You have degree decimal minute. You have universal transverse Mercato and military grid reference system. Now, the decimal degrees is what I selected. So, if you want to use degree, minute, seconds, you check on this. And then if you want to use the UTM, you check on this and you OK. So, it's going to do that. So, I'm using the decimal degrees right now. Now, let's assume maybe you have a bearing of 10. You have a coordinate obtained from a surveyor's compass. That comes in degree decimal minutes. Now, when you have that kind of coordinate and you don't have time to convert, you can easily come to Google Earth and then come to Tool and then Options and then you select the degree decimal minutes. Then you OK. Now, anytime you place, you pick a place mark here. Are you with me? Anytime you pick a decimal, a, a place mark, now you see that the coordinates appearing in degree decimal minute. Now you type in those coordinates in degree decimal minute, and then you OK. Once you OK, it's going to be here. Now, if you come back to tools. And then you click on option. And then you change this degree decimal minute to decimal degrees and you OK. You've successfully converted it to a decimal degrees. Because by the time I right click on this and look at its properties, when I go to properties, you will see that the coordinate is showing degree decimal, sorry, decimal degrees. So co basically, you don't really need to suffer yourself. If you have any coordinate system at all, you can just come and pick a place mark on Google Earth and convert it without having to stress yourself. But then you have to do it one by one. That's the disadvantage. All right. So. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to acquire point futures on Google Earth. So that's what we'll be doing now. And that will be your assignment. So I'm going to show just few things. And then you'll be able to do that on your own. So let's say you want to acquire coordinates of schools in Abuja. What you do is, um, what you do when you want to acquire coordinate of schools in Abuja is that you are going to come on this search tool here, this toolbar here, and then you will put in there school in Abuja, and then you're going to click search. All right. So you're going to put school in Abuja and then you search. So once you search, All right, so 
I was explaining how you can acquire school point, school futures, but though my Google Ad is misbehaving, let's see how fast we can go. It's not really loading. Okay, now it's loading. Now, if you can see my screen, you will see that there is coordinate of school already appearing on my screen. Can you see that? Can you see that there are quite a number of schools appearing on my screen? So it's taking me to Abuja now. So you can see quite a number of schools, right? Are we together? Hello, Sobe Mekano. Are you with us, sir? All right. So we can see quite a number of schools appearing in Abuja. Yes. The video is being recorded, so you, you will get it at the end of the class. I search for school in Abuja. School in Abuja. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, now I have done this search and quite a number of schools are appearing on my screen. So, now you see that I have a number of pages here. This is page one. And there is a box showing here. Now, this box shows that there are other schools that are not showing. So, each of these box, this page showed 10 schools. So, each of the space you have is showing 10, 10 schools. Now, how do I obtain the coordinate of these schools currently displaying? All right. Now, you need Excel to export these schools too. But you'll be doing it one by one. So I'm going to pull off my Microsoft Excel, which is already showing on my screen here. So I'll open it, I'll launch it. Now while it is launching, so now we have Winnie Kids International School. If you want to obtain the coordinate, there's this uh, arrow that is showing here. This one showing here like a, a positional arrow. Just click on it. Once you click on it, it's going to pop up and show you details about the school. I don't know, my Google Ad has been misbehaving, but then let's manage it. Alright, it's opening up. So it's opening up more like it's showing us attributes about this place we just selected. So before it's finished open up, let's go and make some settings in Excel. So on your Excel, you're opening a blank workbook. So here now you have names. You're going to have name of the school. You're going to have the state. You're going to have the local government. And then you're going to have location. And then since it is school who owns the school so we can say ownership yes the ownership is either it's a private or a government then we have type of the school or yeah let's use type now this type symbolify whether it is a a primary a secondary or a tertiary institution and then we have longitude and latitude now all of this information here symbolify the non-spatial part of this information and then this one the longitude and latitude 
stands for the spatial part of it. Alright. So now we have Dantata Sanusi Dantata Memorial School. So now what you need to do here is you copy this school. So you just put your mouse and copy from school to Sanusi. And then you right click from your mouse pad and you copy. Or you put control. The school is telling us that it's in Amag, that is the Abuja Municipal Area Council. So that is the local government in this case. So we are coming to put under local government Amag. Sorry, the recorder stopped. So it's trying to. I, I started the recording again. So it's trying to uh, put it to where I'll save, I'll edit it. Now let's check also where else could in part of AMAC, where is this appearing? So it says CBN, Central Business District. So beside Ministry of Budget and National Planning. For those who know Abuja, me for here, I'm just going to put Central Business District as location. So I'm going to put CBD. Central District Co. And then from the name of this school, Sanusi Dantata Memorial School, where do we think this school will be? So, from my guess, I would think it's a private school. I don't know it could be a public school, but I think it's a private school. And if it's a private school, they normally have primary and secondary together. So, I'm just going to do prime and sec. Now, the next thing is I'm going to bring in the coordinate. Of this school. So I'm going to quickly. I'm going to remove this and so. I can't really find the Dantata right now because the Google has been misbehaving. So we have GSS, say and the rest. So all of these are school appearing. My Google is misbehaving. So let me just quickly pick a coordinate so that you know how we pick it so that you can do this yourself. So I'm going to. I'm going to now put, pick a place mark. The place mark will appear to me. Then I'm going to drag it and drop it at the school. We pick Dantata, but right now, because of the way my Google is doing, I cannot really see Dantata. So I'm going to now pick the coordinate of this Winnie. So I'll drag this to the Winnie school. And then I'm going to zoom up. So that I don't pick another location. So and now I'm going to move it. This is Winnie School. Now once you put it there, you see that a longitude and a latitude appear. So I'll copy the longitude first. Because from our data creation, from the database we are trying to build here, the long comes first. So I'm going to I'm going to right click and paste it. So I'm going back to the Google Earth. I'm going to pick that of the latitude. So I'm going to copy it. Right click, copy, go and paste it. So, I've pasted it now. You can see that 
it's easy for you to now begin to go through after you've copied the winning school <laughs> you now go to high school uh, hill schools and then we have quite a number of schools. we have the region secondary school we have the top hill nursery and primary school so all of this you see look at who say look at who say look at who say look at uh, we'll say still so all of this will fall under who we'll says and then all we we'll say is in amac so if i give you to pick um schools this is how you're going to go about it if i give you to pick police station you search police station in that location if i give you to pick uh market this is the same thing is the same procedure you're going to go about now we have lea primary school we'll say one so this we already know that it is a primary school and it is a, a government secondary school and it is also in Wuse which is in Amak. So basically we have Kudu school which is a is a private school from the name. So this is how you go through. If it is hotel you do the same thing. If it is a market, if it is police station, if it is malls. Now this is how you can acquire this data without having to physically go to site to carry your handheld GPS and begin to pick these schools. So I would like uh, you guys to use this case study in Kaduna and then I'm going to share into groups. Some people will pick schools in Kaduna, some people will pick market, some people will pick police stations, some people will pick uh, hotels and some people will pick because we're going to use this data to do some spatial analysis when we finished. So all of these are things you need to acquire and keep. So I'm not saying you should pick all of it. Just pick at least one to hundred at most. Pick at least one to hundred. Now that will repetitively help you to understand how to pick all of these things. And then you pick it on decimal degrees because you will be doing you will be keeping a data attribute of your work and then this can be the beginning of you building a spatial data database so when you want to do other part you may not be able to harmonize them because let's say you pick them on utm you may not be able to harmonize them from different locations so if you want to change your coordinate system you go to tools and then you go to options and uh you change it to decimal degrees the first one and you okay so all the data you pick will be in decimal degrees so this brings us to the end of today's class if you are done you now click save and you save this as csv so i'm going to save this under my download and then i'm going to save it as csv this is how i save as csv comma delineated and i'm going to name it schools then I'm going to OK. Now it has saved. I'll click yes. So basically, this have been saved. So I'm going to drop a link to this video for you guys on WhatsApp. For those who attend and for those who couldn't make it, please go through this video and uh, go through this video and uh, help yourself by looking at because we're doing an online training it's not a physical class if you happen to be in Zaria I'll be happy to train you one on one but let's try our best to see how we come on board and learn so uh, from me it's going to be a bye bye so tomorrow we'll continue tomorrow we'll be doing map puzzle so please find time and go through this video I'm going to be uploading this video right away all right, so find time and go through this video. So those who are able to come online and go through, please go through this video. Thank you very much. And uh, I will see you tomorrow.